So I think we've all been talking about pregnancy, hyperglycemia in pregnancy. Obviously, we say the diabetes pandemic, the diabetes pandemic is exploding. And so is the numbers of hyperglycemia in pregnancy. And if you look at the IDF data, very clearly when it comes to Southeast Asia, one in four live births in the IDF Southeast Asian region are affected by hyperglycemia in pregnancy. And if you read closely, the last IDF atlas said it was one in six births. So it's already one in four births. So that is something we need to keep in mind whenever we see a female in the reproductive age group sitting in front of us, not necessarily somebody who's pregnant, anybody in the reproductive age group. And this is the figure we need to remember. So again, the GDM case is going up. We can see it here on the graphs. And this is something that we really need to understand in the earlier panel, very clearly a line that said GDM is the window for NCDs when it comes to an opportunity for all of us to act and see if we want NCD prevention in our community. So the first question is directed to Dr. Hema Devakar. Uh, several countries, like was shown in the previous slide, are showing an increase in GDM in the last two to three years. Uh, is such a trend seen in India or indeed in Southeast Asia? Uh, is COVID, the lockdown, the inactivity, the reason or something else? Do we even have a GDM registry in India to come up with these numbers? Yeah, I have two quick comments. Uh, one is about, again, the DIPSI criteria. Uh, my contention is we should not mix science all the time with public health. We need to keep our mind open. The Why have the criteria for diabetes changed over so many years? Why are we not following the same things that we were following 30 years ago? The fact is that there are gaps in the outcome data from DIPSI, using DIPSI criteria. Those gaps do not exist with the IA, IAD PSD criteria, which there are gaps there also a different type. So one may say that DIPSI criteria are useful, and I am no one to uh, deny that. It's a government policy now. But I did say I don't follow them in my practice because I believe that following criteria which have outcome data, if I can follow them in the environment where I work, why shouldn't I do that? And the sensitivity of DIPSI versus this in the wing study was 22 to 27 percent. So all I'm trying to say is that we should not get make, you know, it's not, it's, it's a, we ha need to question everything, we need to think. And things cannot be hammered that this is the only way it is. I'm sorry. So I disagree. I agree with the fact that DIPSI may be the most practical. Lot of work has gone into it. Lot of people have devoted their lives to it. Lot of people here are totally involved. And I'm not belittling that effort in any way. But the fact is that when we look at the actual outcome data, it is not there. To me, it is something that Einstein said, everything should be made simple but not simpler than it actually is, okay? So I think we should be careful. And it is a bit ironic that we are discussing CGM, then we are talking of tertiary care. When we, when we are discussing criteria, then we are talking of public health. So we need to be clear what the science says and then what is possible for us. So I think those, those things are completely, can be different. They should be the same, but they can be different. And I'm not for a moment saying don't apply DIPSI criteria. If you're not doing any tests, please do that. But if you're in a situation where you should recognize the, the, the shortcomings also, we can't just go blindly into that. Similarly, when using CGM. Now, you know, this is like the same thing I say about SGLU2 inhibitors that people don't agree, but I don't know what it is. The CGM I use all the time, LibrePro I use all the time, and the others also. There is a serious problem at the lower end. Yes. The, the, the sensor does not distinguish 50 versus 80. And you need to keep that in mind. So all the patients you think are getting hypoglycemia at night are not actually getting hypoglycemia. Most of them are not. So this, these are, no, no, everything is that now Libre Pro or whatever, so we're not willing to think about it. But I face it every day. Everyone, no, we don't face it. Pata nahi kaise bhi, mujhe to roz hi milta hai. That it is 50 on the Libre and it is 80 on the glucometer. So at the lower end, you've got to be careful when you use these technologies. Right now, everyone is pushing these technologies. 
Right now, everyone is pushing HGLT2 and no one believes genital infection. I have so much follow-up on my patients. I'm sorry. I mean, you know, it's not a rural practice. I practice at a different end. I have an army of educators and I have a lot of people who are following up. No, 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 it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. It's very rare. Maybe I'm blind, maybe I'm deaf, maybe I'm, you know, I don't know what's happened. So please keep your eyes and ears open, question things. If you look at literature from 2000 to 2005, you will think the glitazones are the best drugs in the world. Look at that literature at that time. So for everything we have to question, and for everything we have to know the shortcomings, that's all I was saying. Yeah, I, <laughs> thank so you, Dr. Amrishi. Uh, I Dr. entirely Excuse, agree with sorry, you. Just one sorry. minute. I entirely agree with you. The quest for better and better tests, but simpler and simpler, but doable in our context is going on. And the, when we say Asians are different, I want everybody to pay attention to the fact that the profile of the Asians are also changing. We are swinging into obesity category and then a lot of things are getting, you know, mixed up even within our population. So we need to keep our minds very, very open to see what the future 10 years will bring and I urge each one of us, including ourselves, to document the data.